Hello and welcome to this edition of Inside the Americas. I'm Delano D'Souza. Coming up on the show this week. The United Nations denounces the excessive use of force by security officers in Colombia. Numerous deaths reported since anti-government protests broke out. The United States hopes to vaccinate 70% of its entire adult population by July. Local authorities, businesses and volunteers offering goodies including beer and donuts to ensure people get inoculated. And one region in France continues to win over some of Hollywood's biggest stars. We'll tell you more in this edition. But first, the United Nations has denounced the excessive use of force by security officers in Colombia. This after numerous deaths were reported during days of anti-government protests. Since last week, hundreds have also been injured since clashes broke out over a proposed tax reform. The demonstrations have since morphed into broader protests against the government. Expressing deep alarm at the violence against protesters in the Colombian city of Cali, the United Nations has sent a warning to Ivan Duque's government and called for calm ahead of another mass protest planned for Wednesday. The European Union has also called for security forces to avoid a heavy-handed response. The southwestern city of Cali has become the epicentre of demonstrations against the government's now scrapped tax reform. Security forces reportedly opened fire on protesters there on Monday. Many hundreds have been left injured across the country, and according to the National Human Rights Ombudsman, over a dozen protesters have been killed in Colombia since demonstrations began last Wednesday. What we can uh, say clearly is that we have received reports and we have witnesses witnessed uh, is uh, excessive use of force by security officers, uh, shooting, life ammunition being used, uh, beatings of demonstrators, and uh, as well uh, detentions. Uh, all that in a context, in a really volatile, tense context, where uh, demonstrators have been as well, uh, been violent. Numerous videos have emerged on social media showing police using excessive force during the protests and even shooting at some demonstrators point blank. On Tuesday in the Colombian capital, Bogota, residents condemned the violence. En cambio, ¿qué va a ganar una piedra o una bala? Pues no, se me hace como, como si estuviéramos... The protests have so far led to the withdrawal of the original tax reform, which critics say would have come as a heavy blow to low-income Colombians already hit hard by the COVID-19 pandemic. Following the U-turn on Monday, the country's finance minister resigned and Duque's government says it will now draw up another proposal. Mexico's president is calling for a full investigation after an elevated metro line collapsed in the capital on Monday night. At least 25 people died in the incident on a train line with a history of problems. Emergency services in Mexico City have been working to retrieve the bodies of the victims still trapped in the rubble. El Salvador's democratic credentials are under scrutiny. This after lawmakers teamed up with the populist president to oust judges in the Supreme Court. The opposition in the country says the move is tantamount to a coup. These protesters are in the streets of San Salvador to accuse the president Nayib Bukele of undermining democracy in their country. Pretenden consumar un ya inquestionable proyecto político autoritario en el que todos los poderes respondan a una sola persona. Saturday was the first session of a new legislature under a parliament elected in February. With a commanding two-thirds majority, President Bekele's allies made a radical decision, voting to dismiss and replace all five judges of the Supreme Court's constitutional chamber as well as the Attorney General. The head of the assembly, formerly Bekele's private secretary, hailed a new era. Por fin vamos a tener gobernabilidad y vamos a sacar adelante este país todos juntos con una misma visión. Executive, legislative and judicial power have now been drawn together. It's a move which has sparked condemnation internationally, notably from the United Nations and the United States. An independent judiciary is critical to a healthy democracy and a strong economy. On this front, on every front, we must respond. Naib Bukele says his actions are legitimate and suggested the purge would continue in a tweet which read they are leaving, all of them. 
He'd accused the ousted judges of impeding his fight against criminality and COVID-19, two policy areas which have allowed him to maintain strong popular support since his election two years ago. Under Bukele, the murder rate has dropped drastically and government aid has helped many of the country's poorest families stay afloat during the pandemic. The 39-year-old president has broken the dominance of the two parties that had taken turns in power since the end of the civil war in 1992. He promotes himself as championing the fight against corruption and employs populist tactics, like last year when he sent armed soldiers into parliament to demand MPs approve financing for one of his reforms. U.S. President Joe Biden plans uh, to raise refugee admissions this year to 62,500. That's our number of the week. This move comes after his administration faced a wave of criticism for keeping the number at the historically low level of 15,000, a figure set by the previous president, Donald Trump. Now, the United States is hoping to have 70% of the adult population vaccinated with at least one shot by the start of July. While there are some parts of the population that remain hesitant, local authorities, businesses and volunteers are offering up things like beer and donuts to ensure people get inoculated. Joints for jabs has landed in the US capital, and it's pretty self-explanatory. If you've had a vaccine, you get a joint of marijuana. The pro-cannabis advocacy group behind the initiative has made sure there's maximum incentive. This is some of the best cannabis ever grown in Washington, D.C. Most people will not be able to finish the joint. They will have to put it down because it's, it's a big joint. It's over a gram of cannabis. You go to a bank and put it in. The campaign popped up in New York City too, but some people were hard to please. I think they should hit out some real weed, not the CBD, some THC. As the demand for vaccines wanes across the United States, more and more initiatives like this are appearing. At Krispy Kreme Donuts, your vaccine certificate is worth one free donut a day for the rest of the year. The state of New Jersey is running a shot and a beer program where any resident can take their vaccination card to a participating brewery and get a free drink. And in other cases, the incentive is financial, with West Virginia offering $100 in savings with interest to its some 400,000 young residents. Every single one of our young people, we're going to give a $100 savings bond. Hello, hello. In Detroit, canvassers from the health department fan out to convince people to get a jab. The state is even offering a $50 voucher for anyone who drives someone else to a vaccine site with no limits to how much a person can earn from doing so. The strategies come as public health experts acknowledge the U.S. is unlikely to achieve herd immunity. More than half the population has received its first dose, but the daily rate of inoculations has fallen and the virus might well continue to circulate on a lower level for years to come. The charm of the southern French region of Provence is once again drawing in Hollywood stars. Brad Pitt and Johnny Depp both own properties there and now George Clooney too is looking around. But will their star power help boost American tourism post-pandemic? Emerald Maxwell has been finding out. Nestled away in the Provençal countryside, away from prying eyes, this property comes with eight hectares of vineyards, a private lake, and perhaps soon, George Clooney by the pool. The rumoured new American neighbour is the talk of the village of Brignol. He's certainly charming. It'll be a pleasure to serve him. I'm more of a Bruce Willis fan, actually, so his wife doesn't have to worry. I won't chase him. Oh, very nice. We already had Brad Pitt in Coran, so we're used to actors by now. In just a few years, the VAR has become a stomping ground of Hollywood royalty. George Clooney in Brignol, Brad Pitt at the Chateau Miraval and Johnny Depp at the Plan de la Tour. At the same time, they've also often invested in huge vineyards. Luxury real estate agent Hugo Skillington knows the estate coveted by Clooney, valued at 8 million euros. He says investing in these properties offers the stars an escape from the paparazzi and enhances their image. It projects a better image both for themselves and for their entourage, of a sort of gentleman farmer, meaning the media doesn't just portray them as a rich and lazy celebrity who's come here just to relax and spend a lot of money. 
uh, se, se relaxer et dépenser beaucoup d'argent. From the actors to local MPs, everyone's a winner. Prignol's mayor wants to make Cluny an ambassador for the area. Forcément. Of course, there will be a few Californians who just come to check out where George Clooney lives, but I think these celebrities are useful for us in helping to revive tourism in general. The appeal of the Var for Americans has already boosted sales of Provençal wine. Two years ago, Arnaud Couré sold the Château de Triant to this businessman specialized in organic wine. About 50 to 60 percent of our rosé goes to the US. The Americans are among the biggest overseas consumers of Provençal wine. Provence is rolling out the red carpet for Cluny, hoping it heralds the return of American tourists. Before COVID, they were the region's second biggest foreign customers after the British. And finally, we end with some breathtaking pictures from British Columbia, Canada, where a trio of kayakers recently made what is uh, thought to be the first descent of Filer Creek. That's a 66-kilometer stretch of river. Now, they scouted the location using satellite images, but had to use a helicopter to get to the starting point. That's it for this edition from All of Us on Team. Thank you very much for watching.